Welcome to Korea and the World, a podcast on political, economic, and social issues from the perspective of the Korean Peninsula. South Korea's recent affluence has sparked a renewed interest in the nation's traditional arts and crafts, architecture, and music. Once keen to modernize at any cost, Koreans now pay serious attention to preserving their cultural heritage and promoting it both domestically and abroad. One aspect of traditional Korea experiencing a strong revival is the art of hanbok, the traditional Korean attire. The domestic industry has grown rapidly in the past decade, featuring up-and-coming professionals keen to marry Korean traditional style with modern fashion, as well as attracting Western designers and global brands always on the lookout for new fashion trends. Our guest for this episode is In Oh, a leading hanbok designer in Seoul. We talk about her work and inspiration, her customers, and her dream of making the hanbok a modern, young, and mainstream fashion item. Before opening her own workshop, Ino Chudan, in the vicinity of one of Seoul's traditional palaces, In Oh assisted famous hanbok masters and worked in the United States for several years. She attended Santa Monica College and studied fashion design at the Los Angeles Trade Technical College. In Oh, welcome to Korea and the World. Uh, what is your story and how did you grow a passion for fabrics and textiles? Maybe it's from my, you know, whole of the life. Oh, really? what I, yeah, what I like, what I learn, how I grow, something like that. Maybe I guess, but I never think about it before. So already as a child, you liked fabrics yeah. and like textiles. Yeah, yeah. Um, and did you did you study a specific track? Yeah, my major was a fashion DJ, so I learned about the textile. But I, at that time, I didn't like the mm. you know class. Mm. I just run it because I need to pass the class. Mm. But right now, I'm really enjoying it, so I love to do that for example. When did you know that's what you wanted to do? Uh, work on the handbook. I I just like the, all the time about the historical you know fashion, not just mm. the, you know Korean. I love the European historical fashion. Japan, hmm. China, everything. But I just find out I'm, you know, I'm the Korean. All of the, my friends are not. <laughs> so hmm. then I choose the Korean you know, traditional. And then I think about the, oh my God, this is it. If I should, you know, choose the all the design, the method from the Korean traditional, that's gonna be really, really cool and very unique. Hmm. So it just started. Uh, how do you define uh, hanbok, the Korean traditional clothing? Can you maybe describe it for our foreign listeners? I was thinking about that also. I still don't get the answer. To me, it is just clothing. Some different kind of... There's like a gothic there, and then some ethnic there, and then some, some denim, you know, style, mm. some, you know, tomboy style, something like that. Mm. It's just the one style of the clothing. And uh, how can you describe a hanbok? If someone is wearing a hanbok, what, what, what does it look like? Woman, we wear mm. the skirt. The top is really short. It's the 17th century. It was long, like uh, how we wear right now. Mm. Women wear the shirt like, long like here, and then, you know, wear the skirt on the waist. But mm. it changed to the 18th century and 19th century. The top getting shorter and then skirt getting longer. So right now we're wearing the very short top and then very long skirt. So the the waistline getting up to the chest, something like this. Mm. So, And then for the men, pants, we wear the pants and then shirt and then outer, you know, coat, something mm. like that. But it changed outer coat to getting shorter right now. So it lo- looks like a vest, but before we couldn't wear something like that. Mm. So everything's getting, you know, more longer. Right now it's getting shorter, something like that. Mm. Do colors or patterns or fabrics play a role? Are there colors, for example, that you should never wear with a hanbok? Before we couldn't wear the black, but mm. it changed to like, you know, Japan colony period. Mm-hmm. Men usually wearing the black coat. It gets changed. So right now we, there's n- you know, nothing the color that we cannot wear. Are there any accessories that are traditionally worn with a hanbok? Yeah, there's a lot. Right now, I finished the study for the women, so we wear the norige, which is there's no no like similar accessory in the Europe or some you know Western style. So we only call the norige. It's just a charm like there mm. with uh, some threads, and then tikoje is something like a, you know woman's pin. 
Um, was there a, a class differentiation in the past? Would uh, a Yangban, for example, have a hanbok that looked totally different from a commoner's? The shape and the, um, how to make is the mm. same, but the fabric was totally different. Yangban can wear the, the silk, or they can wear some specific color, mm. but the, for the you know, commoner, they only can wear the white and then cotton. Um, do you know where the word hanbok actually came to pass? Because I'm guessing that when Korea was divided into three kingdoms, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the name was not hanbok because it means Korean clothing, literally. Yeah, because at that time, everybody wear the, you know, hanbok. Mm. So maybe they didn't call it hanbok. It's just, you know, jogori as a top, mm. pants as a baji and skirt. Chima, something like that. We called something like that. It's just my guess, but maybe around the 20th century, 19th, 19th century, century yeah. yeah, we changed the uh, what we wear, right? Like at that time, some cultures from outside of mm. the country just came into the country a lot, right? Mm. Then people started to wearing the something like we wear right now. Mm. I think then we started to, to call the. Humble, mm. but I'm not sure yeah. I didn't. So in reaction to Western clothing, yeah. Japanese clothing. Mm. Mm. What is uh, unique about the hanbok? Are there differences with um, traditional clothing that we can see in China, in mm. Japan, or do they have something in common maybe? It's very similar, you guys mm. know, right? Because all the clothing from the China. So we get the clothing from the China and then change it a little bit. And then... Japan get from us and then change it a little bit, so it's very similar. So if I compare with the China and Japan, I cannot, you know, explain the unique of the you know, hanbok. But before and now, it's getting unique. Before it didn't that much unique, you know, because as I say, at the time everybody wear it in the China. They were very similar, you know, with the hanbok and the Japan also. But now we don't wear. We don't wear hanbok anymore. That's why it's getting unique nowadays. Mm. So I guess my next question then is, how is hanbok worn today in 2015? Where does, where does the hanbok fit? Uh, is it only for special occasions? When, when can I wear a hanbok? When should I wear a hanbok as a Korean? For the wedding day. Only one day. <laughs> <laughs> only for wedding? Yeah. It's getting changed a bit, a little bit, a little bit. But uh, for, you know, most of people, Korean people, just uh, wear the hanbok for the wedding day. Mm. Not the first part of the wedding, even. The second part of the wedding. First part, they wearing the dress, with a white dress from the Western. Mm. And then change it to the hanbok for a second part. And so it's not only the bride wearing the hanbok, it's also the groom, also the man? And yeah, also the man. Yeah. Sometimes the man, sometimes no man. And what about the families or the guests? The mother. Mother's ah. wearing the hanbo all the time, but not the father. <laughs> mm. When you talk to Koreans, do you have the feeling they consider the hanbok as a regular clothing or is it a costume? And I'm asking because in, in Western countries, uh, if you are wearing something traditional or something local, immediately people think that you dressed up, that it's fancy or that it's mm. a costume and it's not considered as something standard anymore. Of course, they think it's a costume oh. more than, you know, Western. Because uh, when I learned the uh, fashion history, I could see now what we're wearing his jacket mm. or like some color, something like that. It's from the, you know, traditional. But we're wearing the Western tradition and the Western contemporary, right? Even they don't like to, to wear the jogori and hanbok, but they really... Think about the special to wearing the some you know corset, pusti, mm. something like that. One word that we often hear about hanbok is that it's very unpractical, it's mm. quite large and ample. Um, do you think that the key to making the hanbok trendy again or hip again is designing it so that it's fitting and so that you know you can wear it in everyday life? No, I really cannot say because mm. in 18th century hanbok is very fit because they wear it and then they live with that clothing. So right mm. now, it changed to the very bigger and the longer, something like that, the, the, you know, the arm part. Right now, we have like a round shape, but 18th century, we have the straight shape, and then it was very narrow mm. for the arm, and then, you know, the top for the woman, very fitted. 
Mm. The fashion shape, the clothing shape, very changed a lot. So from the 17th century and then to the 19th century, the clothing looked just the same as the, like uh, Korea mm. and then you know the early of the Joseon Dynasty. Mm. But then middle of the Joseon Dynasty, Dynasty and the end of the Joseon Dynasty, women's clothing changed a lot. It very fit and then getting smaller. Mm. So I just uh, choose the idea from the 18th century. That's why. Because it fit, it's very comfortable to move. Because mm. the arm very bigger, it just you know just to touch everything yeah, and then some food it's like not that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Mm. So it's hard to say that I changed the clothing very you know fit for comfortable. I just choose what they had before and then what I like from that time. So you're actually going back to the roots. Of, yeah, of the that's right. It looks that, that you're going back to the roots, but you said that hanbok became more and more ample. So do people, when they buy a hanbok, buy it a bit like in Europe when we buy a ball dress? You know, ball something dress. very mm-hmm. large and something mm-hmm. very fancy. Mm-hmm. That's that's what happened. Mm. But skirt really big. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe because of the, you know, what you said, mm-hmm. you know, the skirt getting bigger, bigger and it's very volume has mm-hmm. the woman's clothing very, you know, big and more elegant, something like that. Maybe because of we get the effect uh, from the, you know, the Western style. So Korean girls love the big skirt mm-hmm. and it's very small <laughs> chogori mm-hmm. the top. The upper part, yeah. Yeah. Can you maybe introduce your workshop, uh, Ino Chudan, to our listeners and maybe tell us what the name means? It's from the, my name. In Korea, it's kind of a popular thing that we choose. For the hanbok shop, they choose their name. Something like In Kyung Oz Hanbok Light Laboratory, something like that. Mm. It's a kind of old patient's name. Because we call like some pomok jam or chudan for the fabric uh, store or the hanbok store before. Mm. So right now people don't use the this kind of name chudan. So, so Ino is my name, and then chudan is old fashion of the you know hanbok store's name. Who are your target customers? Who are the typical customers who call you and and say they would like to? Uh... I don't have, mm-hmm. I I don't have my target. I just do, I just do what I like, and then if they like it, it is good. If they don't like it, how I can do? <laughs> um, what are they? What are your customers looking for when they come to see you? What kind of consulting, so to speak, do you provide them with? Do they come primarily for wedding, or they do they have already an idea in mind? It's different all the time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they come for the wedding, or sometimes they just want to wear it. To go to the Gyeongbokgung or something, mm. <laughs> or sometimes they go to the outside of the country, so they want to get like you know the clothing because you, they say because I'm Korean mm. something like that, or sometimes they ha- want to to get the hanbok for their baby's first birthday. Mm. Mm. Sometimes uh, they want to get for the, their you know the high school or university graduation ceremony. So it's every time different. So do they already know uh, what they want in terms of quality, in terms of designs, or do you somehow get inspired when you see them and then you offer some P- ideas? Usually people just know about it because mm. you know they don't know many thing about the hanbok because we don't wear usually right now. Mm. So if I just make the you know very cheap quality hanbok, they don't know, and then they cannot compare cheap one and explain what is the difference. Mm. So. Sometimes, you know, very few people, they already have the idea, but sometimes they have no idea. <laughs> so I need to explain the things, what is the difference, what you need, or... Can you maybe tell us a, a story of a, of a memorable customer that, that is kind of, I don't know, amazing or extreme, or something that really stayed in your mind? Like Every customer I remember, because I just really try to, you know, hear what their story, mm. what they need to, you know, humble. But if I need to choose one or two, there's two, there's two customers that I still remember. One is very happy one, and one is very sad one. <laughs> Can you tell us so yeah. without revealing their names? Happy one was the like family from the French. The husband, the, the man, the husband, he has the, the job in Korea, so they spend three 
years in Korea, and then on the last year of the you know Korea life, mm-hmm. they just came to me to get humble for the family, you know, the husband, the wife, baby for the ceremony, their daughter's first year birthday. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so they are from the French, real French person, you know, the white people. So it was like the first time to make the humble for the white, you know, white people to me. So mm. I was a little worried about that, that I can choose very good color or something like that. I just tell them honestly, I never made it, you know, humble for the white people. So this is my first time, a little bit worried about that. And then she said, don't worry about it. Just the weekend, you know, talking a lot and then she said like she can help me also because she knows about the her, you know, her style or mm-hmm. what color is good for her. So I finished the, you know, the baby sample, it was very small and the Louis blue color because they are from the French, right? Mm-hmm. And then the, the mother's one was pink, you know, and with the, with the brown stuff. And then husband, you know, quit to wear the humble because he said like I'm not sure about that he, it looks great on me or not so he just wear the suit hmm. and then we spent like two months to finish the hum- to making the humble so when they wearing and then in our studio we made the picture it was just so hmm. great and then when they you know pick up the humble the last day last day to meet to with me and then she said like see I told you <laughs> we can wear it even if we are not the Korean. So I learned a lot because of her and then why I making the you know because the you know skin color, eyes color different, hair color different, their body shape so different. Mm. So I remember that it was like a happy story and the sad story was the, like a month ago. The Korean girl married with uh, the husband that came from the Praha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, white man, and then the Korean girl married with him, and then they didn't have that much money, so they just spend all their money for to get the you know airline ticket. The, mm-hmm. Yeah, so she just came, and then I really want to get one thing for me for my wedding. They didn't even couldn't get the the ring also. So like, but then while they came here. The friends call her. That you, I know that you guys don't have that much money. So if you want, to, I'm gonna give you my wedding dress for your wedding. But then, it is okay. But the what you think about that woman, you know, is very important. She was. She looks. Her face looks a little sad. So she didn't make the humble for. And then after we finished the first meeting, and then she stay. I really want to get one thing that just for me for my wedding, but I can, I can feel how she said something mm. like that. So I remember two customer, one is happy, one is sad. One. Well, thanks for sharing. Mm. Um, I think you already talked a bit about it, but how long does the entire process of creation um, take from the initial consulting when the clients come to the, for the first time and then when the handbook is actually um, finished? finished. Two and a half months we did, mm. sometimes three months. Yes. And so mm. what is the process approximately? So f- first um, mm. conversation, then mm. pictures, fittings, how, how does that work? Yeah, first time we just, uh, I just uh, try to explain what is the humble, what, you know, century humble we do. And then ask the customer what color you like, when you want to wear it, something like that. So we choose the fabric and, you know, color. Something like that. And then we start to make the inner skirt first. Mm. It usually takes uh, a month to finish the inner skirt. And then when we finish the inner skirt, the customer come again, and then we do fitting, first fitting. Mm. So after we you know, get the size from the customer, and then we choose inner you know, lining, you know, lining fabric, inner fabric, something like that. So to make the specific color, exactly color what we are gonna you know, make the the outer, you know, clothing. And then after that second meeting, we start to make the outer, you know, the clothing, mm-hmm. and, you know, skirt or mm-hmm. like a pants shirt or outer coat for men. It took a month again. So we spent two months, right? And then when we finished the outer, you know, clothing, and then the customer coming again, and then we drape the, you know, very small part of the, you know, the, 
how can I shorter strap or length of the skirt or like a snap button mm. placement or something like that we drape it so that was the like a second meeting right mm -hmm. so after second meeting we need two weeks to finish the clothing and how many um, customers do you have at the same time how many handbooks are you working on at the same time it depends on the season uh, wedding season we have a lot like sometimes 30 off the season we have like a two or three Hmm. Thing like that, but it's hard to say how many you know set of the you hmm. know working on the set at the same time because it just uh, we just start to sometimes uh, inner skirt working and then outer skirt we have uh, like six people work together so everybody's the schedule is different so one person usually ten ten pieces work at the same time. So there is quite quite a lot of demand actually for this. But, you know, it's almost a handwork, so mm. it's not easy. Um, without revealing any secret, um, what is the price range approximately from the cheapest you would work for until maybe the most extravagant you ever had to um, do? The cheapest one is around uh, $1,500. Mm. The highest price is 8000 And so what determines the price mostly? Is it the material, the quality of the material that is the most important most factor. important yeah fabric is important but who made it how it made it is most important because the hanbok is the most very important part is the line mm. how it looks like so who made it, it is most important but the, we don't use you know the cheap fabric mm. because you know we made a very very you know high quality master made hanbok with the very cheap fabric there's no happen right so you also make um, very traditional hanbok, but your designs are usually uh, a mix of traditional elements and more mm -hmm. modern contemporary designs. Mm -hmm. where, where do you draw your inspiration from generally? For the traditional part, I, as I say, I just got the most of the idea at the 18th century to mm -hmm. 19th century. And then for the contemporary part, just uh, I just try to enjoy what I like. That's why my handbook just looks like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for the inner part who, that the people usually cannot know about what I choose the you know traditional, I always uh, try to you know follow the traditional. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like for example, construction or how to how to sew it. I just try to follow the traditional one, but the fabric color rangey or like how to style it. I just uh, like to get idea from the contemporary. Mm -hmm. um, where does your traditional knowledge um, come from? Are there any uh, handbook masters, so to speak, from the past or from the present? Where, where do you get your knowledge from? I work with the, um, you know, the handbook designer Yi Young-hee, who is mm -hmm. very famous in Korea and, you know, France also. So I learn from her. but. She didn't usually use, you know, real, real traditional parts. So I just go to the school to learn about it. So we, I just uh, took the course that was about, uh, we just get the clothing from the thumb, wash it, and then we study that, and then we made the exactly the same with it. It's record like book one course. So I took that class to learn the traditional. Mm. So my master was the mm, the name Ko Puja, very famous person in that, you know, the academic part. Let's maybe talk about your, your vision, so to speak, behind your work. Mm. Um, do you consider uh, your work on the Hanbok as purely aesthetic mm. or do you feel like you're on a mission? I like to choose both. Mm. In in my study of the I really like to choose the ethnic part mm -hmm. and then I follow the re I just want to show people real traditional both it very cool color mm -hmm. <laughs> but I opened up my internet shopping mall because I really like to show them that what I can claim with the contemporary part out of mm -hmm. the handbook so at the internet shopping mall I always you know show people the 
contemporary, you know, taste hanbok something like that. Mm. Do you take you know a particular pride in Korea's heritage, and so it is also part of your work here to promote traditions that you feel may have been sidelines, sidelined, or is that maybe less important to you? I don't choose like uh, any side. So to me, nothing is important. The most mm. important th- thing is what I like. Mm. So if I just uh, more like a traditional, I always follow the traditional. But if I sometimes uh, like or someday I just well, let me think about it. Traditional is a little bit boring, so I want to choose the contemporary part, and then I just just so yeah, I don't think about. You know mm. that also before. What do you think of the current trend of introducing the hanbok into modern to the modern fashion market? Uh, we see more and more Korean fashion brands, but also foreign fashion brands mm. that sell dresses based on hanbok designs. Do, do you welcome that, or do you want to protect, preserve the uniqueness of the hanbok and maybe somehow you know its nobility? I'm very welcome that I don't <laughs> protect mm-hmm. hanbok from that. It's very good, right? Mm-hmm. I just you know the Chanel show. Mm-hmm. I learned many things about because that every was, that de- was this month at the mm-hmm. Dong Demon Design. Yeah, Plaza, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every designer has a different taste right even if i just designed you know humble something like that but like other designer has other opinion right Mm -hmm. so to me it's very welcome because i learn a lot what they doing um since you mentioned that um regarding the channel uh chanel fashion show Mm -hmm. it got a lot of positive reviews in uh, the western press but apparently there was some criticism in korea do you know why some korean um Uh, fashion experts didn't really like it because the academic part of the masters they don't like to change the hanbok even mm-hmm. if my work they don't like it my my you know my professor she hate me because i changed the hanbok a lot but to me most important thing is that people like the, our traditional or not mm-hmm. that's why i just want to do what i like or sometimes what people can understand the you know, what I design. It's always, you know, happens something like that. There's both, uh, you know, different opinions. I think the hanbok is definitely experiencing a, a popular revival in, in Korea as well. You have more and more celebrities wearing hanboks or at least mm. related designs that, you know, look like hanbok. And President Park geun herself is always wearing now a hanbok when there's a very a festive occasion. Do, do you welcome that? Is that, is yeah, that a good thing? Yeah, I welcome that. It's a good thing, but To me, it's more important. Thing. It's more younger people. It's not so even if they cannot wear the experience, very expensive hanbok. But you know the celebrities, they wear the very expensive, mm-hmm. very fancy hanbok, right? So like sometimes young people thinking about the that's beautiful because that is expensive. I'm a little bit worried, but they have the that opinion. So that's why I started the you know the internet shopping. You know more. Mm-hmm. The, I just to uh, show the people it's a kind of a cheap but nice design handbook for like uh, my age or even younger than me, like twenty. You know, or teenager, they can you know wear the our handbook, and then it's gonna be more important to me. Um, so, if you want young people to wear the handbook more often, when can they do that? Since you just you mentioned before that the wedding remains really the main occasion for hanbok, would you like to see people wear hanbok generally on the streets or in, in more occasions? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really trying something. You know, in Japan, like some some you know some party or some the college graduation, they usually wear the their you know kimono hmm. or. Some of the Korean students they just asked me to make the hanbok for their graduation. Who studying at the Japan? Something like that. So I dream right now. Some day Korea just doing same thing. Such why I just think more important thing is like young people usually choose the hanbok than mm-hmm. you know the celebrity. Uh, what do you think of critics who say that the hanbok should never be worn without the chogori, which is the ample upper garment of traditional hanbok? Why we cannot wear something like that? <laughs> the we if 
right now government and then many of the master try to um, try to uh, getting try to make the hanbok getting popular mm -hmm. right if we really like to do that we need to we really need to stay out of the the fixed idea right mm -hmm. so i think it's very very good movement for wearing something not the <laughs> old way like they try to find a new way right mm -hmm. so it's good to me Looking at your designs, many of your handbooks um, look resolutely contemporary, I would say even fashionable. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're trying to, to achieve, establishing Korean garments as a modern style that anyone can wear? I didn't think about it before. I just, uh, I just think about it right now, right now because you asked me. As I say, I just doing what I like and then I'm on, you know, the contemporary, nowadays, you know, mm -hmm. woman, right? So, if I do what I like, it just uh, naturally something like, you know. Naturally, it will become yeah. uh, 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 modern. Yeah. Mm. Uh, maybe to conclude, Inho, um, do you think Hanbok is what you will do for the, the future? Will you maybe become a, a Hanbok master, so to speak? Or do you have other plans uh, in the next 10 or 20 years? I go back to my school. I plan to go to the Parsons. <laughs> To the you know the M8, I just uh, enjoy my times for to make the humble as much as I can, and then I will go back to America to go to the school again. And after that? After that, I want to. Right now, I'm designing traditional clothing, right? But mm. I want to design everything from the you know the traditional things mixed with the contemporary stuff for playing, for culture, for lifestyle, something like this. So then I, I want to introduce the people, even if they cannot feel the which is that I got idea from the you know traditional but they while they using it, while they playing with it, they you know they can study the all our weird traditional hmm. because it is in right there. Great. Hmm. Well, good luck with that, and thank you so much for being our guest today on the show. Thank you. This was Korea and the World. To make sure you don't miss our next episode, bookmark our website, koreaandtheworld.org, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.